What's going on everybody? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kieran Hunter and today I'm going to be talking about something that I've done a couple topics on in the past and that is going to be about false twin relationships. Okay, now this is something that I went through for let's say a, two years around. Okay, a little bit less. Maybe took about a year and some change for me to really realize and get that message to sink in. And then maybe some months, uh, maybe six or so after for me to heal from that, okay? For me to basically come into acceptance, right? Now, this is going to be my story, okay? Now, the purpose of me making this video is so that you guys, if you find yourself resonating with this video, if you do find yourself in a similar situation, if you do think that this may have been something that you've been through or looking for answers, I'm hoping that this will stop you and make you look at the current relationship that you're in and decide whether or not you are actually in what has been deemed a false twin relationship, right? Now, really quickly, just to start off this video, a disclaimer almost, a false twin simply means uh, like someone that acts or someone that looks like in the 3D your twin, right? Your twin flame, what you would have is that idea right? But they ultimately do not fit that role. And it looks very, very similar. If it didn't, it would be called like the very intense soulmate kind of thing, right? But it doesn't. So it fits this sort of categorical pattern, okay? And so it's going to look like a real twin, um, but it's not necessarily going to be all the kinds of things, right? It may, it may look like a duck, but it's not talking like a duck, acting like a duck, swimming like a duck. And for all intents and purposes, it doesn't eat, taste, smell like a duck either. Okay, so with all that being said, just keep that in mind because the labels are very dangerous. And primarily the biggest reason that labels can be dangerous is because when you have a label, you can attach to it. And what I mean by that, of course, is that for instance, if you find yourself in a twin flame relationship or what you think is a twin flame relationship, you can excuse toxic behavior because you're justifying it using the label. It doesn't matter how they act, what they do, how you feel, what your intuition is telling you, you will always remind yourself, oh, well, they must be my twin, therefore I should accept this and keep this going, keep the energy exchange flowing. When a lot of the times you'll make the mistake that I did and you will just, again, you'll ignore everything. And in my case, the mistake, of course, was that it wasn't my real twin. It was a false twin. Okay. Um, but you can categorize false twins as uh, false flames, narcissists, energy drainers. Doesn't necessarily even mean they're bad people. It just means that they are the wrong person for you and that they are not going to give you what it is that you need. So I'm going to get into my story now. I'm going to be as brief as I can. Sorry, something just moved over there on its own accord. So that's awesome. Good way to start a video. Uh, and I'm just going to get into it. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully you guys stick around and watch this video. And hopefully my story, just sharing a little bit about it in this hopefully around 20, 20 or so minute video, will give you guys an idea of what it looks like based on my own experience. Okay, and there used to be a time where I couldn't even make a video like this. So all that being said, Let's get started. Okay, so two years ago, almost a little bit past this date, but um, February 2018. Okay, now I was maybe three or four months what you would consider awakened. Okay, I was right in the spiritual ego. <clears throat> I was doing a lot of meditation. I was feeling good. I felt like because I was awakened, everything was going to be all right. Everything was going to be great. And everything that I ever needed was going to just kind of roll into my life immediately like all this stuff was going to happen okay the year before a narcissistic ex-partner of mine had dumped me on easter very fun and that was a very hard thing for me to get over it felt like a soul loss and that actually was a catalyst to my spiritual awakening okay so when i met my false twin okay who i'm obviously not going to mention when i met her i was at a point in my life where i felt like i had all the answers okay when i really didn't it's almost like being a teenager on the spiritual awakening uh, phase, okay? I felt very much like I was in the know-how and everybody else was kind of wrong, regardless of where they were coming from, okay? It's what you would call the phase of spiritual ego, right? Now, I met this woman at a gym and I didn't, go, I didn't work at the gym, I just happened to go there. And it was, everything seemed very synchronistic at that time, right? 
um, there was this intense connection, right? Now, it wasn't what you would think of as love at first sight, meaning I didn't see her and then immediately know or feel love, okay? And I'll get into why I know that later. Um, but it was more of a buildup, meaning that I met her and then I gradually started to see her more and more. It seemed like my whole life was now revolving around meeting her. I used to work out at nights and then suddenly I felt like, okay, let's work out in the morning, which is when she worked. And all these things were sort of pointing me in that direction, right? And so when I met her, this there was this intense attraction. I could feel it like, ooh, like it was really, it was really, really intense. It was like the feeling of biting into a really good peach you know, or, or like a really good milkshake. Uh, you guys, I fucking love milkshakes, man. But it was really good, okay? It was like a really intense connection. It's it's overly intense. It's like you've been working out in the, like the yard all day and you come on side and you drink lemonade or something. It's just refreshing. It's just, it, it's all intense. It doesn't matter that the lemonade is full of goddamn sugar and bad for you. Just the fact that it's quenching your thirst was enough. So in that phase, in that mode of awakening, I assumed automatically that this was true love, okay? So I made that assumption. The universe never guided me to make that assumption. And that's an important distinction that I realized looking back, right? So there was flirting. There was this intense attraction. There was this back and forth. There was this really strong pull, right? But there was something missing. But it did last. It lasted for a couple of weeks, for a couple of months, maybe about a month and a half, almost two, where this intense attraction was back and forth. Um, again, the, the flirting, the things like that, the, the little winks. But as time started to go on and nothing was materializing, it never really developed into any strong friendship, into, <clears throat> into any romantic partnership. It just kind of stayed in this mode of flirting, of the attraction. You know, I found myself wanting to be near her all the time. <clears throat> because it gave me a lot of energy to do that, right? And it wasn't until much later on that I realized that I was actually giving my energy away. It wasn't being reciprocated, okay? So that's an important distinction to make as well that I would later realize. So on this journey about that time, maybe, you know, if that was a met her around February 2018, about April or so, there, there was, now there was all of these insecurities and these fears. And unlike a real twin flame relationship, those fears seem to be all one-sided. They seem to be so horrible. They seem to be just based in things that have been buried that were dark that I never really knew existed, or at least I wasn't fully aware of. Basically things I could ignore. And they came to the surface. Now around this time, I also found out my soul name. I was really in connection with my spirits, like I was saying, and all that was great. And that was another further indication that I was like, okay, Maybe that means that she's my twin, right? I was seeing synchronicities. I was seeing her name everywhere. I was seeing some special things that only me and her would kind of know. But those things were, again, they were the proof of the connection that me and her shared spiritually, right? Because you and your false twin do have a spiritual connection, but in the 5D. And if you can't look at the 3D, and make sense objectively of the two, then you can become lost and mistake it, right? Because feeling an emotional connection doesn't, or a spiritual connection even, doesn't necessarily mean and equate to there being the chances or the likelihood or the healthy outcome of there being a relationship in the 3D, right? Something that I did not get until much later on, right? So all these fears, all this stuff started to come up. It was really hard to deal with, and I started to feel very restless and very stressed. Okay. Now at this time, it just seemed like the universe wouldn't really put us together. There's always be like these missed opportunities. It was like, it was like, why was I feeling this way? I was starting to get kind of agitated, frustrated. It was like things, the universe just wasn't putting us together. And I couldn't really understand it, of course, because how come there was signs and synchronicities and yet the universe didn't want to just put two and two together for me. Naturally, at some point I discovered the term twin flame, soulmates, things like that. And I started to equate the two. And I started to, of course, in my mind, believe, well, this looks like that kind of relationship. So maybe this is what's going on. Maybe this is just that separation, that whole mirroring thing, right? And that's what I was, of course, led to believe. The more research I did on it, the more it just made sense, right? And then I, of course, discovered things like tarot readings on YouTube um, and, and just kind of those general ideas. Now, around that time in April, uh, because of all this stuff was going on, what had happened because of this false twin, because of this person in my life, I felt very called to now 
ascend. I was ascending. My soul was ready. She was a catalyst, right? Looking back, that is what she is. A false twin is always going to be a catalyst for you. And looking, uh, looking back, I remember that it was always going to be that way, right? Because I never really knew what I was doing with my life. There had been times in my life where I was quite wealthy um, for my position in life and, you know, taking college money, just grants, uh, loans, and having just money but never using it for anything. I would just end up fucking going on vacations and doing drugs, which was really fun, I'm sure, but I don't have any of those drugs, I don't have any of those friends, I don't have any of those money. So really, essentially, other than the experience, my life was kind of just being wasted in my early 20s, right? So at 23, um, I met this girl, right? And, <clears throat> or was it 24? 24, right? 24, I met this girl. And so it was, again, it was at a period of my life where now it was time to ascend, okay? So I quit my job. I basically quit society, quit life, and started to, to really do my own thing. I kind of decided that at that point, I had to figure out what it was that was inside. I had learned my soul name, the name of my very existence, beyond this human comprehension, along with a plethora of other information, and this deep inner knowing that I was meant for more. And that was too much to ignore, regardless of how difficult it was, right? So I basically quit my life. And kind of in a way, well not kind of, I plummeted myself into debt, really, because all these bad things in my life started to happen. Knowing this woman brought an intense amount of bad luck into my life. Uh, breakdowns in my cars, my mental health, uh, hugely my mental health, and things just started to deteriorate. Nothing could really uh, materialize. It felt like I was just losing control. That, that buildup of all the spiritual energy and love that I had gained, um, for myself and really for just this appreciation of the universe for the world that was gone and it felt like these insecurities and fears were going to just take hold of me and eventually i decided that um, i kind of just when you kind of started like a quarter life crisis so to speak i took my car i, I drove to an out-of-state job in yellowstone and that led me to um to to a whole bunch of um to, to a cross-country tour, really, to driving across the country. Now, before that, around this time, um, you know, I told her my feelings. Uh, I texted her, or, or we had, well, I told her in a parking lot how I felt about her, because I just, in my mind, I thought, well, this can't be a lie. This has to be true, right? And there was never, it was like, it was well-received, and yet it was always like there was a game being played that I didn't really know about. Like, it wasn't like I was playing a game, and yet there was a game being played for me, about me, and I couldn't understand it. People would warn me. Friends that I would tell their reactions would always say something along the lines of, this is not the one for you. She's not whoever you think that she is, regardless if I didn't mention the twin flame, right? And that's an important step as well, guys. Your friends' reactions will tell you a lot about people, who they really are. And there was some texting, but it was like long. I had to wait a week and it wasn't, and I remember the only time she really texted me was when I stopped giving a shit. When I literally said to myself, you know what, I'm fucking done. I don't care at all. Then a text would come, right? So that's also kind of, it wasn't a very good sign looking back either. Kind of a red flag when you stop giving a shit about someone, that's when they kind of come into your life, right? Um, normally, healthy relationships just shouldn't work like that because you wouldn't want to not give a shit about them and then they would normally give a shit about you so they'd be texting you and stuff. But it wasn't like that. There was games and the communication, it just stopped, and there was never any commitment. So by the time that I went on this journey, just because I was so stressed, because I couldn't make sense of this connection, it was insane. It literally drove me across the country. That's how insane I went, is I was stuck at a rest stop in Montana for three days with no food or water because I couldn't, because I was just going on this dumbass journey, this weird spiritual journey uh, where I felt like I needed to just go because I couldn't handle being there and I was tearing up my hair I didn't eat drink no money in a small town in buttfuck Montana I assume which was actually the name of the town I'm sure if you look it up it's probably the name and that uh, was difficult obviously traveling across the country trying to do these different things tried to move back home didn't work out right and that whole process was insane. I remember all of 2018 just being one mind fuck, really, for the for the really the seven or eight months that was left in that year, just didn't make any sense. I was so stressed, and no matter how much I tried to communicate to her, 
to understand, to, to get something, to, to really make something happen, it just didn't happen. She, she, there was always an excuse, always something that just couldn't live up, right? There just wasn't. It's like, oh, I'm not ready to commit, no commitment issues, uh, though this and this is going on, this, this is happening, oh, sorry, I can't do that, oh, I'm not looking for that kind of thing right now. It was like whatever was there at the beginning had now shifted because she had all the power and I had none, right? And it was completely uneven. <clears throat> And that was difficult, and I always felt like I couldn't speak, right? Even right now, my throat chakra was a little bit like that. Remembering the feeling, it was like I was afraid to speak to her. Even way at the beginning, it was like I was afraid I couldn't be my full self, right? But no matter what, I still trudged on with the belief that she was my twin. No matter who, what personal cost it took, no matter if it was an argument with a friend who wasn't even awakened and couldn't even contemplate or understand the existence of something as silly sounding as a twin flame, uh, let alone the spiritual awakening journey, right? It's already hard enough to be understood as an individual, let alone someone going through a process like this. So no matter the case, um, eventually at some point it became uh, flipped on me. It became like she had forgotten who I was, who I really was. 2019 rolls around. It's like by that time I had become so obsessive, so concerned with the concerned with her, concerned with trying to be with her. It's like I lost myself completely right? And conversely, during this time, I was learning that I, my, my passions in music, I discovered that I loved making music, I discovered that I, that I wanted to do YouTube, that I was good at tarot readings, I discovered spiritual gifts, psychic capabilities, clairaudience, um, clairvoyance, all of these abilities that have been developed since, but I discovered those all around, like months after meeting her. And so again, I took those as a connection, well that must mean that she's my spiritual twin, that she's my twin flame. But not the case, because it's important to remember, of course, for me looking back, how you feel during that journey, right? And that is uh, fear. I felt fear the entire time. And it shouldn't be like that. A relationship shouldn't drive you to feel insane. And then at some point, you know, 2019, she's angry at me. She hates me. She doesn't want to speak to me. She's making threats. She is uh, really saying the rudest, most terrible shit, no matter how nice or complacent or understanding I tried to act, no matter how much compassion I tried to put into something. It just didn't work. She didn't want anything to do with it, and yet all those things about commitment that she had mentioned were now suddenly out the door, and eventually she now had some new partner. Someone else, what I would then at the time describe as karmic, again, feeding into that twin flame kind of thing. I was mistaking the spiritual connection for a legitimate physical one, and that's going to be a huge mistake that I hope a lot of you guys are not making and I'm hoping again by this video you guys will realize that, that is the biggest mistake you'll make on this journey is you will take spiritual coincidences and synchronicities you will take those events the ones that I'm describing and you will apply them to your situation no matter how much fear you were living in in this relationship no matter how much damaging and toxic it makes you feel and is you will still justify the connection and that's something that <clears throat> I had to learn that that wasn't true and it wasn't until um, really until she really was so rude to me that I realized that this connection was not going in the way that I thought and I still tried to make then I kind of changed it and I started to think of twin flames as something inherently toxic themselves which is certainly a way of looking at it you can either believe that twin flames are toxic and then keep the false twin as your twin flame for the rest of your life and then go find a soulmate or you can accept the experience, which will then lead you to a true twin, which is what happened to me, okay? So, 2019, I discovered all these things about myself, discovered more that more about who I wanted to be, more about what I wanted to accomplish, things such as being, um, being on this journey, being with this kind of, um, with these ideas in my head, um, the YouTube, the singing, the, the music career, all the things that I wanted to accomplish, the writing, that I discovered poetry, all of this world was opening up to me. And yet the one thing that I wanted the most, that I thought that I wanted the most, was never allowed to manifest. And it became confusing. I thought, well, then how come the universe will allow me uh, new avenues, new careers, new opportunities, new places to live, new things, more spiritual awareness, new ideas, right? even new friends, um, spiritual friends, people more in alignment with myself, how come it will allow that, but not this one thing? 
right? At the time, I couldn't see that the universe had no problem giving me what I wanted and what I needed, but it did have a problem with giving me this one particular girl. It didn't want to give me her above everything else. For whatever reason, even though at the time I refused to see it, the universe had my best interest at heart. It didn't want to give me the one thing. It just didn't. No matter how much I asked and begged and cried and pleaded, and trust me, there was a lot of that shit, it didn't want to give me that one thing. And that's going to be something that you need to realize as well. Why are you not getting the specific person in your life? Why are you not getting him or her? What is it? And so, if you are in this journey, or you might think that you are, or you have been, maybe you'll understand. Hopefully you guys will comment and let me know, because this stuff will drive you crazy. Now, eventually, it became and got to a point where it was so insane that uh, she really did just start threatening me to do all this stuff. But the games and the energy exchange was still there. It didn't matter what she threatened me with, talking about how she was going to go to court or some weird shit when I just wanted the truth, right? I just wanted to know, was it all a lie? And it wasn't until the last time we communicated that I really understand what that meant. There was going to be no truth coming from her because she wasn't going, she wasn't aware of the truth. There was no truth to her. There was nothing to tell. And so the truth eventually becomes something you find in life, especially on this awakening journey, that is going to come from within, that you can't always make everyone understand you. You can't people please. You can't make everyone like you. And that is an important thing that I came to realize in this journey is that sometimes the truth is yours and that needs to be enough. And that is a point of acceptance. And what does that mean? What did this whole journey lead me towards through all this pain, through the late nights, through grabbing my head, tearing out my hair, literally across the car, screaming, putting, slamming my fists in, against the wall, breaking shit, finding out she was engaged, all of this shit that I went through, losing my mind, friends, people I cared about, everything, arguments, what did it all lead to? Each time I destroyed myself, what did it lead to? It led to two words, self-love. That was the whole purpose from leaving my life, my 3D kind of life, the life that really wasn't mine in April 2018, to the life that I'm leading now in April 2020. What's one theme from there to here that taught me? Well, it was about self-love, okay? Literally burning up in flames to having some sort of attainment of peace with the Buddha, okay? From A to B, okay? What helped me understand B? What helped me understand this journey? What made it all make sense to me finally? It was meeting a true twin flame. And I'll tell you that that relationship makes sense. The relationship I'm in now, it makes sense. There is mirroring for sure. There is debates, arguments. There are late nights. There are certainly things that are different, the different perspectives. And yet she is awakened. We always work together no matter what. We always confide in each other. We always try to our best ability to tell the truth, and we always try to openly talk, and no matter what, we always forgive each other, and we always grow and learn, and we are helping each other both with our different perspectives, and from the beginning, that relationship was supported by the universe. I was in California, she was in Toronto, where I was originally born, and now I'm in Toronto. I was in Toronto only two or three months after that, where I now uh, have my own way of living, my own way of making money, as well as the opportunities that far outreach what I was doing back in 2018, which was working at Pizza Hut, trying to not kill myself, still smoking weed every day, and um, I don't, you know, April 2018, I don't even know what other drugs I was doing. Probably uh, some fun stuff, but uh, anyway, the point is that that life, the old life, this new life, completely different, on a different wavelength entirely. And while I'm not perfect, and nor will I ever be, when, and I still of course have some issues and I'm working on things that I'm trying to release, I know my place. 
and I know what is being asked of me, and I know what my soul is trying to lead me on, and I know what intuition is saying, what intuition is. I know that those are the whispers of my soul, and those are the whispers that you need to listen to. Like a trusted friend that is trying to explain to you his story, listening means not thinking, it means sitting still and just opening your ears and not judging and, and listening. Literally, do not think when you are trying to listen to yourself. Just lay back. Ask yourself, is this my twin flame? And listen. Listen literally with your ears. Close your eyes and imagine a whisper is coming from these directions of your head, right? Left and right ear. Imagine that. It helps. Listen as if there was a child, your own inner child, coming towards you with a problem. Don't deny, don't suppress, don't ignore it, don't hide, don't run away, don't hate, don't attack. Just listen. You can make your decision after. So, anyway guys, that is my false twin flame story. That is what a false twin flame relationship looks like, okay? It always ends in self-love. It always starts with that intense excitement and attraction, but, but between then and here, there's nothing but stress and pain and more downs than ups and never any commitment, nothing ever materializes and it just feels like the universe doesn't want to give you it. It's not supported. So if this video resonates with you, if it makes sense, if it's something that you are going through, if it's something that you have experienced, if it's something that you may not be sure of, I really hope that this video does something for you. Right? It's not an easy thing to talk about. It's not an easy thing to understand. Most people will say that you're crazy. Most people will think that you're insane. And you yourself will say that anyway to yourself. So it's not easy. It's difficult. Right? And for any of you guys who are going through that, again, who think that you are, more than anything, I would love to know if this video did help you. So please leave a comment. I don't need likes or subscribes. That's always nice and I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody who's even followed me onto my YouTube channel so far. Um, but I, what I care about more than that is the understanding that this knowledge is helping someone. Okay, so hopefully this video, this message, what I was talking about, it helped. And hopefully a little bit about the twin flame, the real twin flame at the end, helped as well. Because she is, without a doubt, more beautiful aesthetically, more beautiful internally, more helpful, more resourceful, more useful, more compassionate, more caring. She is everything that I actually wanted. It just wasn't in the physical body that I thought I wanted at the time. And that is the importance of being open. Love does not come in the form that you think. Not all the time. Okay? Be open. The universe, essentially yourself, knows best. Remember guys, you're the universe. The universe is you. You're the one calling the shots. Remember that and listen to yourself, and it will lead you to the best possible path. All you got to do is be a little bit patient, a little bit trusting, and have some fun with it, guys. If I, if I regret one thing in life, it's not having more fun, okay? So again, hopefully this video was helpful with you guys. I will talk to you guys later on, um, and uh, I don't really have any messages. I'm not very good at saying goodbye. It never happens. So this is just going to be an awkward outro. And I'm not really gonna, I'm not gonna end it in a normal way. I'm just gonna click this and it's gonna, it's gonna stop at some point and just abruptly. So, see ya.